Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. I'm going to teach you how to use a tool that makes this beautiful wreath behind me. I fell in love with this project. It's called the Twister Holiday by Needle Love. It's a neat little pattern that uses a tool that um, was actually manufactured by a different company. And when I jumped into making this project, I was surprised how much of that was not intuitive and I thought I'd share this with you. So if you too fell in love with this beautiful wreath behind me and wanted to make the project for which we do have a kit, um, I wanted to show you how to use this tool because again, I was like, I, this can't be right. Um, you'll need to pick up, if you, want, if you don't want to get the kit, just be sure to pick up the Twister Holiday Pattern to make the wreath. And then you'll also need the Primitive Gatherings primitive pinwheels tool and this is the two and a quarter inch tool. Um, I know this twister tool is what they're calling that comes in different sizes and some from different companies. The one that we used again today for the twister holiday wreath is by primitive gatherings it's a two and a quarter inch and it has a unique grid on it. Now the most um, non-intuitive part of this is in the pattern it has you so squares together including your borders. You basically make a quilt top including borders and you cut it back up. Now that is not intuitive. Um, I have never sewn borders on a quilt and not then taken it to be long arm quilted but instead cut it up. So we're going to do that today together. This is just a sample of what's behind me. Of course if that whole wreath when it before it was cut up was would, would fill most of this table so you're just seeing a section of that with the upper border on it and that's what it looks like after the fact this is before this is after it's amazing how it shrinks um, a couple tools that i found handy were uh, friction pens i have a black and i have a red and i also have a white marking tool it's not really a pen it's from Soline. Great to have when dark, uh, marking darker fabrics. So um, get that. And I also recommend a smaller ruler. Now I want to show you close up what this twister tool looks like. There's a grid on it. Let me see if I can show you on a, against a dark fabric. There's a grid. All right. Now you've got a, a right side and a wrong side. The wrong side has these little dots on it, these little um, stabilizer dots, I guess I would call it. So that grid, I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab my black pen. So I've got these intersections. I've got the squares and the upper border. Of course, I'd have a side border here. You're going to lay that uh, basically kind of bullseye to be running along those seams. Now, I recommend you could, by all means, at this point, grab your rotary cutter and just start cutting. I've shown you this before, though, where this isn't dangerous, that's not dangerous, we're starting to get dangerous, and this is just downright, don't do that. So I recommend that you take the extra step to go ahead and mark around your template and then go back and cut, just from a safety standpoint. So I am going to go ahead and mark that all the way around. And then I will continue marking as I go down to the next intersection, which is naturally here. Okay, and then I'm going to come here. Same thing, lining up my horizontal axis and my vertical axis with the lines on this template, this tool, and marking all the way around. Okay, now I'm going to continue marking this and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how you keep this organized because that was another thing I figured out. Most times when I'm quilting a quilt, I, I can just grab the pieces and take it to my sewing machine and I know what pieces get sewn together. This is not intuitive. You must stay organized in order for this to work out beautifully. So I'm going to keep marking and when I come back, I'll take you to the next step. I have my top row marked. Now you can go through, of course, and trace the shape of that tool on everything. But, and I really recommend you listen to me here, cut out one row at a time, 
so one row at a time. If you try to cut all this out and stay organized throughout this whole thing and cut everything at once, the chances of you ending up with a wreath that looks like that is slim to none. So um, stay very organized, work on one row at a time. I, again, to, to stay organized and increase my chances of success, uh, I'm using a friction pen, by the way. I use this because it will erase with heat, disappear with e heat. On darker fabrics, not so much. It will leave a haze. Sometimes I want that marking to stay there, but just know that um, as in as an any quilt, you're gonna have a quarter inch seam. I'm now going to mark a number that will be hidden in my seam allowance. So it's just a very subtle number, and I'm saying that's one, that's my two, that's my three, and you can see the whole idea here is so that when I do take this to my sewing machine, I'm gonna sew piece one and two together. I'm gonna to sew piece three and four together, and piece five and six together, and so on and so forth. And then I'll have the my one, two unit sew together with my three, four unit, put that aside. My five and my six and my seven, my eight. Put that, sew that, put that aside. That's how you always wanna piece things. Don't just do one big long string. Um, so mark everything. Now, this is another thing that, that helped me, is I, you know what, let me, let me do something else. I wanna mark this next row so that you realize how snug this ends up being. And you can't, you can't cut very deep beyond that line or you're cutting into the next row. So I'm actually going to mark the next row so you see how snug this is. And you don't have a lot of wiggle room in here. So let me do that and I'm actually gonna come back and show you that. So I've marked that second row just because I want you to see, I think you can see that with the overhead camera, it's pretty snug. So you can't get too wild and crazy cutting out those squares. You need to be careful. Um, notice I switched to a red pen. It was hard to see the black on the dark green in particular. And I found a little more luck with the red pen, uh, red friction pen. Now I do have that white sew line that I mentioned before. Um, you could also try to trace around that with the white. Um, you could write the numbers on the white. Do know that the sew line white is not, does not disappear with heat. So that one's gonna be there forever. I don't think that disappears either with water. Not 100% sure of that, that may be possible, not sure. But in any case, that's why I switched to the red. Get yourself one of these four and a half inch rollers. I love this. I have a, a four and a half, a six and a half, um, 12 and a half ruler, which I love to square up 12 and a half inch blocks. And then my standard six by 24 inch ruler. Um, I just love the convenience. It's not this big old ruler that's bumping into me. So I'm just going to lay that on my line and I'm just gonna cut that angle. It seemed to be, um, when I first started cutting this out, I did that and then I turned it and I did, that. I mean, I was just turning this thing and turning this thing and I thought there's gotta be a better mouse trap. And there is, just cut that particular line on all of them. Then go back and cut the other angle. Now do not be tempted to cut that next row. Remember what I said, one row at a time, one row at a time. And you're just going to continue. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get these cut out and then I'm gonna show you, um, I'll at least get them to they're almost out of here. And then I'm gonna show you how you take them out and you orient them so that you sew together. So when I come back, they will be almost all cut out and then I'll show you how to go the next step. Now I've cut around three of the four sides. Notice how the fabric starts disappearing um, as you are cutting that apart. So I'm gonna show you the fourth side So I'm just gonna orient this back. So you see what, when, it, when you come off of that row, you do a simple slight turn to the right so that your number one is straight up. That's another great reason to mark this. You now know what's north, south, east, and west on your uh, square. What's the top, the sides, and the bottom. So let's do that again, just so you can see it. 
So there's my two. And you're just going to keep going all the way down. All righty. And so on and so forth. And remember what we're doing? We're sewing one row at a time. Press all seams open. That's another thing that I learned right away is you got a lot going on here, a lot of intersections going on. Press the seams open so it lays nice and flat. So you've got everything lined up, your ones all the way down. And then just you're just going to piece like you would any other project. Two squares together, right sides, making sure your numbers are at the very top. Quarter inch seam allowance, press the seam open. Same with number three and four, right sides together, quarter inch seam allowance, press the seam open. Join that row, set it aside. Do the same with your next row and all the way down. And that's it. Then you just sew all the rows together, um, again in groups. So row one and two together, then row three and four together, and then so on and so forth. It's always important that you do your quilt in sections and then sew sections together versus starting with one row and just adding on. It, that's what leads to distortion. That's all there is to using this fun tool. It is so cool. And I've seen other um, shapes. I've seen owls, um, hearts using the twister tool. So it's a great investment. Plus, when you do buy the tool, um, there is a pattern of just putting the squares together just to make a quilt. So you don't necessarily have to be making a specific shape. Um, so that's a bonus that you get a pattern as well as the tool. Now the bow, whole nother story. Catch me in my next video. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel while you're at it. Um, that way you do, don't miss any DIY or quilting videos. But I'll show you how to make the beautiful bow in our very next video right at the end of this video.